This is the church of Santa Croce in Jerusalem, the Holy Cross in Jerusalem. Helena welcomes us to this church. She's the mother of Constantine, and she's holding a cross, the cross that she brought from Jerusalem. You can see it over the facade of this church. The paintings around the apse of the church tell of Helena's great achievement. She went to Jerusalem to find the cross on which Jesus died. Who was she? We don't know much about Helena's early life. They say she was a pretty waitress in a tavern who caught the eye of a Roman soldier, Constantius Chlorus. Chloris wanted promotion in the army, so he took Helena as his concubine because she was from the lower class. They had a son, Constantine. Chloris eventually became emperor after marrying Flavia Theodora, his predecessor's stepdaughter. He sent Helena away. But her son Constantine stood by her. He became emperor after conquering Rome in 312, and he showered his mother with honors. She was a Christian and undoubtedly advised the emperor in matters concerning the Christian church. One of Constantine's first acts was to stop their persecution. Embracing the Christian cause, Constantine began a massive building program for the Roman church raising churches at the Lateran, St. Peter's at the Vatican, St. Paul's, St. Lawrence, St. Sebastian. Helena surely had a hand in it. Constantine gave her the Caesarian Palace near the Lateran Church, which was later transformed into the church we're in now. Twelve years after conquering the city, Constantine left Rome to build a new imperial capital where the Black Sea and the Aegean Sea meet. The city was called Constantinople, today Istanbul, Turkey. The emperor planned to make the empire a Christian empire with Jerusalem its religious center. Helena went to the Holy Land to oversee his plan. She left Constantinople in the winter of 324 and reached Palestine the following spring. It was a hard trip, over 1,200 miles, even for a woman of privilege. She was almost 80 years old. The Christian historian Eusebius wrote, she was old in years but young in spirit. She wanted to walk in the footsteps of the Savior. Helena visited the places where Jesus had been. She made plans for churches to be built over some of those places. Above all, she wanted to honor the place of Jesus' death. It wasn't hard to find. Since the time of Jesus, Jerusalem's Christians honored the place where he died. In 138, the Emperor Hadrian built a Roman temple over the spot. Constantine ordered the Roman temple torn down and a church built there. As workmen were digging its foundations, they discovered an ancient cistern filled with debris from the Calvary execution site, including three upright wooden beams and the title that Pontius Pilate had attached to the cross of Jesus. It was a startling discovery. The oldest accounts say that Helena determined the cross of Jesus by touching each of the three wood pieces to a woman who was deathly sick. At the touch of one, the woman was healed. This was his cross, Helena concluded. She enshrined a piece 
of that healing cross in the newly built Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Then she left the city and took with her two other portions of the cross, a part of the cross's title and some nails found in the cistern. One piece of the cross she gave to her son Constantine in Constantinople. A smaller part she placed in the chapel of her private residence at the Caesarian Palace in Rome. She covered the chapel floor with soil from the Jerusalem excavations, and they remain here this day. The Christian world rejoiced at Helena's discovery. Less than 24 years before, Christians experienced the worst of all persecutions under the Emperor Diocletian. Christianity seemed on the verge of extermination. Now, a new triumphant day had dawned. The scarred wood, buried in the earth, now brought to light, seemed to signify God's triumphant power. Pieces of the wood were placed in settings of gold and precious stones and revered as a sign of resurrection. Helena must have seen her own life reflected there too. Helena's extraordinary visit to Jerusalem began a powerful movement of Christian devotion. Crowds of pilgrims made their way to the holy places. Like Helena, they returned home with reminders of their visit. Small vials of oil, small handfuls of soil. Some even carried back tiny, precious portions of the cross itself. Helena died a few years after her Holy Land visit. Her remains today can be found in the center of Imperial Rome in the church of Santa Maria in Araceli. Helena, a former tavern waitress, cast aside by a powerful, ambitious man with whom she had a child. Her great achievement was her search for the cross of Jesus, a mystery she treasured. After her death, she was revered as a model Christian, especially by women of the imperial court. The church honors her as a saint.